personality profile of a prime minister that India deserves next year or next year onwards, I would say. Yeah. It might sound idealistic, but I would call it neoliberalism. Yeah. That at this stage, young India deserves a prime minister that we look up to, we respect, and is relevant and effective. Instead of seeing or slipping towards mediocrity by choosing again another person, and then we'll sit and have the same conversation a few years from now, as that the nation did not have a choice. But so, yeah. so can I think we, it's, yeah. can so we I, define the yeah. sketch? So I think it's, again, important. Uh, you know, the, the, the glib answer to your question would be, you know, Jawaharlal Nehru's internationalism, uh, Atil, Atal Bihari Vajpayee's wit, P.I.V.V. Narsimha Rao's, uh, you know, reforming instincts, Indira Gandhi's war leadership and X, Y, Z. That would be the glib, glib answer to your question. But I think it's very important to recognize that we are, are not a presidential system. You know, uh, in 2009, I wrote a column which said, we must, we need good minister. If you think of the best ministers we've had, you know, young people don't remember. C. Subramanyam, who started the Green Revolution, who made us self-sufficient in food. Madhu Dandavate, who reformed, you know, our entire railway system and made railway system safe and accessible for even working class people. Manmohan Singh as a finance minister. So we have to, you know, we have to think of Supreme Court judges. You know, Supreme Court judges like J.S. Barba, Venkita Chalaya, generals, uh, you know, who, who we've had. So I think it's important not to, re if you re repose your faith in one redemptive person who will solve your problems, you will get Narendra Modi. <laughs> right. So I think it's important for us to think of leadership in all spheres of life. And you know, I've been lucky enough, and I'm sure Karen has, and so have some of the older people in this room, to know outstanding civil servants. You know, I, uh, I ran into a person walking, uh, while walking here who was a remarkable foreign secretary, you know. If he had a foreign secretary half as good as him today, we wouldn't have problems with Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Maldives, Seychelles. Right. So I think young people must not look for a great redemptive leader because if you do, you will get another Narendra Modi. Look for leadership in all spheres of life. Respected sirs, I would like to ask, how has Narendra Modi been avoiding total accountability for, uh, for his failures? And is the media not to blame for that? Well, he doesn't give an interview except to a tame channel or anchor. He hardly, he comes to parliament and he comes and runs away. So, you know, I think the media has had sections of the media, not just the wire, other sections too, have been probing, have been focused. Uh, but he just avoids it. You know, he's a scoot and run kind of chap. You know, I don't know how, how many times has he participated in a debate in parliament? We don't know. You know, has he given uh, any free-flowing interviews? Not at all. You know, he's traveled abroad sometimes, and his host prime minister takes interviews, but he will not. So, you know, I don't think the media has to blame. He's just about, he ducks it. Yeah. But, Karan, you want to say something on how he has avoided accountability while the lady walks up? <laughs> Mr. Modi is very good at walking out of interviews. That's it, that's it. Lovely, 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 lovely. To receive instant updates on all videos from The Wire, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon. Pay to support independent journalism. Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.